Hey y'all, welcome back to the show. Now here on Yolo, Texas, we visited a number of tap rooms, wineries and distilleries all over the great state of Texas, but we've never done something quite like this before. Our next destination is a cider house that prides itself in making the most authentic beverages, plus a whole lot more that'll have you coming back over and over again. So come with us as we make our way to Austin and make friends with Texas Keeper Cider. All right, so it's starting to feel like fall, and what does fall mean? It means harvest, and when I think of harvest, I think of apples, and what do apples mean? They mean cider. Now, I've personally never had cider, but what better way than to bring in the season than here at Texas Keeper Cider? So, what do you say? Let's go try some. And who better to give me the lowdown on cider than cider maker and co-owner Nick? I started making cider when I was down in New Zealand, um, studying winemaking. Can you tell me exactly what goes into it, what it is? And yeah, so, so there's some misconceptions about what cider is, but cider is to apples as wine is to grapes. And so basically what you need to do to make quality cider is have good apples, and then you need to be really delicate in the way you ferment those apples. So when you're making aromatic white wine, it's really a delicate process. You ferment really low and slow, and we do the exact same thing with our cider. Is this all you or is it a team? Like Lindsay, Brandon and I all started the cidery together. Um, so Lindsay and I had lived in New Zealand on and off for about eight years, um, worked in the wine industry down there. And then about 2013, we started chatting to Brandon about opening up Texas Keeper. Um, and we start pulling permits in 2013. In 2014, we brought in our first fruit and released our first cider about six months after that. So after all that talk of cider, I was ready to try some. Okay, so this is our Texas Keeper number one, um, which is our kind of our standard bearer. Um, it's a blend, which is a, a typical, like more traditional way to make a cider, where you would take a bunch of different apples and you would blend to taste. Oh, that's delicious. Thank you. I have a special place in my heart for this one because it's so unique, I think. Um, this is Cider Noir. This one is double fermented with Belgian candy and then aged on oak with pecans and orange peel. Oh, it's different, huh? It is. I love this one. It's I kind of like caramely, it. I think. And I think this is perfect for the holidays as well. Wow. Yeah, I mean, by a fire. <laughs> so this is my current favorite. I think this one just goes so well with um, heavy holiday meals. Ooh. So this is heirloom. This is using um, a different blend of heirloom variety apples, so American heirlooms. Oh my gosh, that's so good. You're, it does taste a little like Prosecco. Yeah. I love it. Can you make mimosas with this? You definitely could. Yeah, okay. yeah. Also, anything like a champagne cocktail, yeah. you could you could transfer with to cider. cider for sure, yeah. And with Texas Keepers starting their new food program, I had to meet the executive chef. The cidery is a magical place. I mean, it is a beautiful property to begin with. Kind of one of those secrets that when people, I think, discover it, they're just amazed that it's here. Really, we just wanted to do a menu that was going to pair well with the cider and sort of follow the same theme of kind of classic old world that the cider does. All right, y'all, I had such an amazing time here at Texas Keeper Craft Cider. If you're ever in Austin, make sure to put this on your list. As for now, I'm gonna finish this delicious glass of cider and hang out with my friends. I'll catch y'all later. Wanna learn more about ciders and visit their tap room? Click on texaskeeper.com for directions and a list of upcoming events.